Des, you're, you're only back hurling probably not even a year at this stage, having been away playing professional soccer and all that. And um, You know, you, you came into the Ballygunner panel last year after they won Munster, and then you were involved in the panel up to the All-Ireland semi-final where Ballyhale won. What's it been like trying to get back into hurling? Uh, it's been... It's been great, to be honest. It's a new lease of life, if I'm being honest. Um, it's especially with Bally Gunner, you've you've such high expectations and stuff, so you can't really rest on anything, and you need to be training hard and doing everything properly. And while you were away in England, you know, playing with Brighton, you you were keeping keeping your touch in the whole time, were you? Because like I presume, hurling would have been your first love growing up. Ah, uh, yeah, it was. Like you'd always be tapping around or whatever, I had the hurling that over there with me, all right, and then any time you come home, you're up in the field or whatever it is, like, all my best friends are on the belly gunner team, so any time we were doing that and there was hurlies involved. And can you tell me about how you got back into playing with belly gunner, because, you know, it wasn't the case that you just showed up and, you know, you came back home from from Brighton, you did join Waterford City, you ended up playing for Waterford footballers as well, so, like, can you just tell us how it happened? Yeah, it was, it was a bit strange, to be honest, I remember just... Ballygunner were after, I think they won the Munster final and my brother JJ just said, come on, come up train with us for a while until you figure out what you're doing. And that was at the end of the, the Irish soccer season. So went with that and then kind of went through to the All-Ireland semi-final with Ballygunner. And then after that, Benji Whelan gave JJ a ring my brother, which was would be on the wall for the football panel and asked would I have any interest in coming in with them. So I went straight in with them, then played the remainder of the league and then went into the Munster Championship, but it was it was a quick few months, I suppose, when you think about it. Um, but it was it was good. When you come from a professional and football environment, and I, I know you probably didn't play too many senior games, you definitely played in the EFL Cup against Bournemouth. What uh, what did you notice any difference when you came back in terms of like how your athleticism, how that ta- worked in in GA? Yeah, my, my I suppose my fitness and that helped me loads, like in terms of it. I would have been, like, it was weird. When I'm playing soccer, I wouldn't class myself as fast, like. Mm. But then when I came back, I was I was very quick, like, do you know what I mean? It's just the different types of fitness. Um, as a midfielder in soccer, you're just getting around the pitch, whereas in hurling, you need to be sprinting a lot more and stuff. Mm. But, um, yeah, it definitely stood to me. But then there was another side of it that I had to get used to as well, was the physical side of actually game situations and taking big hits and things like that, which you would never get in, mm. in soccer. Um, I'd say a lot of people wish they would, but you don't like so. Just getting used to that bit and the change, you know, the gym programs, and that was a bit different. But I, I got used to it fairly quick. So then, talk to us about your your first Watford Championship and and getting into the team and eventually getting into the into the final and beating De La Salle. Yeah, it was it was great. I, I started off the championship. It was a quick turnaround in fairness after the Pally Hale game last year. So I think it was two or three weeks. We were back out in, in uh, Waterford Championship, so there was a few lads that were missing, a few lads needed a break, and thankfully I got got a chance to come in and play. And ever since then, I've I've played every game since, so it, it's been great. But I suppose the change of managers in Ballygunner probably helped me a little bit as well. Darrow Sullivan came in; he was the minor manager in Ballygunner for the last few years, and he brought in a few young lads as well. And I class myself as one of them now, really. Like, but thankfully he came in and kind of gave me a chance. And do you feel like, I suppose, that Ballygunner can kick on and win more? Because last year won Munster, and it had been such a voyage for so long. I think maybe had won it in 2001, and a lot of kind of near misses ever since. Yeah, that's it. Like, we want to be as successful as possible. And in fairness, we've, as a club, they've taken some some beatings in Munster Championships and I think before we met in the Piercic last year we lost two finals to them so it has been a tough tough task for lads but everyone in the club wants more and there's no real talk of retaining Munster it's just like another new championship that we want to win and hopefully we can keep going further and further. So you've you've experienced some good atmospheres in your time and you know, you, you, we talked off camera before that uh, that atmosphere when you were playing against Bournemouth. How do you compare it to the atmosphere in the GA field? Is it similar, just sort of atmosphere, people roaring in the crowd, or is there any sort of a difference? Uh, it's different. Look, in, in soccer, you get a lot of chanting and stuff like that, so it is different. And then in the GA, you just have a lot of lads roaring from the sidelines and the stand, like, so it is different. But the, the tension and atmosphere in a close GA game 
probably outweighs a, a soccer match, you know what I mean? So, look, it's just two different cultures, I suppose, that English football fans have compared to GA people here have. When you when you won the Munster title, or sorry, Watford title recently, some of the quotes that you were saying is, you know, it's more like a family, whereas in, in soccer, people are kind of, you know, quietly hoping you do poorly so that they can take your place or what have you. Uh, is that something that, that kind of... Did you understand that before you came back or was it only after you came back to Ballygunner that you realised that? Um, no, I always kind of knew of it because it was weird because before I went over to England, I expected it to be like a GA dressing room. Yeah. So I expected it to just be a, a good team that everyone wanted to do well. And look, everyone wanted to do well, but individually you wanted people to fail so you'd get your chance. Like, So it was different, but as I said last week, it was... It was unreal to have the lads sit beside you working so hard to get exactly what you want and you're able to do it together, so that's the big thing. Yeah, and you know, when you're, I suppose you're a young lad, you went over to England at, was it 16? 16, yeah. yeah. When you go over, I suppose, the cliche of everyone on the outside looking in thinking, young lad going over, you'll have the world at your feet, you'll have money, you'll have, you know, women throwing themselves at you, whatever it sort of is. Did you think that when you were first signing for Brighton? Yeah, you probably do, you probably think it... Uh, the glamorous lifestyle you might have but it, you, you only think about it was small but thankfully I was grounded and I came from good breeding like that I came from GA background that you never think you're bigger than anyone else that kind of way so that's always stayed with me thankfully and but yeah like people do get sold that dream when it's not that at all it is if you play 50 games in the Premier League but before that it's not at all yeah, because there was a case of, for example, Mikey Drennan, who I interviewed before, and he was talking about going over to Aston Villa, he got a bad injury, he kind of ended up, you know, you'd go and do your training or rehab, be home at half twelve and he was sitting inside a dark room for the rest of the day and got into gambling, depression, that kind of thing. Is that a story you've seen? Yeah, it is definitely, and there's loads more that you have no idea about, but that's just the reality of professional footballers, that you have so much time, everybody's looking at you, you need to leave live as quiet life as possible but you want to be doing stuff at the same time and you can see exactly why people get drawn into the gambling the drink and all that sort of stuff and something probably needs to change in that regard but I don't know how because it's so cutthroat over there that no one really cares about you and that's the reality of it Um, you're lucky like as an Irish family you're always going to have people behind you and stuff but when you're over there on your own you're there on your own for a while and I was lucky I, I lived with a great family that was like a home away from home. Um, but for a lot of lads, it's not like that at all. And can you tell us about your, your one like senior game against uh, in Bournemouth in the League Cup? Because like this is something else you, you told me off camera, that you can have all the talent in the world, be a brilliant player, but still you need the breaks for, it to kinda, for you to get the chance with the first team. Yeah, definitely. And look, I was lucky I got, I got to play a professional football game, but it was a cup game that... There was senior players rested for a Premier League game on the weekend. So, like, sometimes you think of that, I'm only playing because the lads are being rested. But you still get your chance and you need to take it. But there's so much involved to becoming uh, 50, 60 games in a Premier League player. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's way different to what people think. You need a lot of luck. You need to work so hard every day. You need to be consistent. Mm. But the big thing for me is a break and be, being lucky and being in the right place at the right time. I get the sense that you don't exactly, you're not there regretting the fact that you didn't continue in a football career. It seems that, that you're pretty much okay with that. Yeah, I am. And look, I lived five great years over there and a lot of people my age would dream of doing it. So for me to be able to do it was great and I don't have any regrets because i done what I could over there. Look, injuries came and things mightn't have happened for me, but that's all part of football and any sort of sport so I could I could get injured in the morning and be at a GA for a while you know what I mean so that's just the reality of it all um, but no I definitely don't regret anything So you've played Gaelic football for Waterford you've played soccer for Waterford United and there seems to be one left for the perfect hat-trick the hurling team uh, Yeah well hopefully that'll come in in its own time and look we're just concentrating on belly gunner at the moment and and getting us being successful as possible with Bally Gunner first and hopefully that call will come that I'll, I'll be able to go in with Walford Hurlers and look, there seems to be a great setup happening there at the moment with the new manager and the new backroom team and stuff so hopefully Walford can kick on because it's been a dis- disappointing few years for for 
what for person looking in at it all like I, I would have been at the All-Ireland final there two years ago and and you think how far the team has gone since then and you just want to get back to them days and like you would have seen your brother involved as well so like you would have been a big Waterford fan throughout your youth yeah definitely like Wayne was there for a number of years and I used to often go into training with him and stuff like that so it was great like but yeah hopefully they can just get back to being successful and a couple of years ago, your brother Wayne, he, he released that kind of blog online about the depression that he was suffering from. Do you remember that coming out at the time and, and the impact it had on you? Like, did you, did you know that he was going through that? Uh, not really, to be honest. Look, he told us he told us before it came out and that he would, but I think only my mother and my father knew. I'm not sure if any of my brothers knew either, or sisters, but it did hit us a little bit by surprise. But look, I'm glad he did come out because it has helped him a lot and... For me, it didn't really impact me too much. Look, I, I was over in England at the time when he did come out with it. So, But look, it was great that he did come out and I think it's helped him big time. And the next thing up now is the uh, B Monster Clash with Six Mile Bridge. You're looking forward to that down to the, the Lions then? Yeah, I can't wait for it now, to be honest. It's got over last weekend and since Monday we've just been looking forward to that. Look, it's going to be a, a really tough place to go. For me, it's my first Monster Championship game. The lads have been through epic battles and... Look, it's going to be really hard. It might be harder than something we faced before because we're going down there and their own club grounds and stuff. But look, Davey we fits it. Yeah, Davey will be there. But sure, look, you know what kind of man he is. He's he's a great J man, and you see how successful he's been with teams over the years. So look, we'll give it our best shot. Best of luck. Thanks very much. Thanks, a million.